Hello, my name is Mark Lindsay and I am one of the directors at Product Approvals. We are a global certification consultancy with a specialism in North American and Canadian requirements. I've been involved in certification for 20 years and PA has been helping people get products into the North American market since it began in 2006. I'm going to talk about certification and the US market covering the topics identified. So the requirements for settling into Canada and America, the UL approval, authorities having jurisdiction, routes to achieving NRTL approval, applicable standards, and the relevant uh, standards UL 508A CSA number 14. In the US, products and machines that are operated and used by people in the workplace are covered by the US Department of Labor, and in particular OSHA. Occupational Safety and Health Administration. These are government bodies. They are responsible for implementing the Code of Federal Regulations. The Code of Federal Regulations covers a wide range of regulations, but Section 29 covers labour and is similar to the Health and Safety at Work Act we are more familiar with in the UK. Many people have heard of UL approval and believe it mandatory for sale of products in the US. A more correct term is NRTL approval. NRTL stands for Nationally Recognised Test Laboratory, of which UL is one. There are a number of others such as CSA, TUV, SGS, and they are all NRTLs and are all audited by OSHA. NRTL approval is mandatory for certain industries such as the hazardous location sector, but for most industries, it is not a legal requirement, like CE marking is a legal requirement in Europe. However, many companies require NRTL approval as part of their building insurance, which we'll talk about more shortly. <clears throat> for Canada, certification is mandatory. Each province has their own laws and amend the CEC, which is the Canadian Electrical Code, to require that electrical products and machines are approved. Back to building insurance. AHJs or authorities having jurisdiction are building inspectors who review workplaces and sign off buildings. This is a reg regulatory this is regularly regularly needed for insurance purposes. To make it more complicated, each state has their own laws and some states do need it, others don't. AHJs have the ability to red tag a machine, which means if there is something wrong with a machine, it is locked off and power cannot be applied until the issues are resolved. AHJs are regularly county sheriffs and fire chiefs and are not necessarily technical. They regularly use a tick sheet that references UL approval. If no UL approval is in place, then the machine does not get signed off. There are two ways of achieving NRTL approval. The first is type approval, which is a very arduous process with construction and test requirements. This is more suited to mass manufacturer with thousands of products dropping off the factory line, all the same, and all approved. You cannot make changes to these products without evaluation and you have factory audits to ensure you are making the products correctly. The second is field evaluation which is less arduous and designed for low volume high value machines. It is a one-off inspection of a single machine on site when installed. If there are multiple identical machines on the same location, this can be taken into account, otherwise separate inspections will be needed. Machines going to Canada can have CSA approval carried out in the UK and the label added, which is accepted in Canada, but not accepted in all areas of the US. During a field evaluation or special inspection in Canada, the standards that are applied are identified on the slide. As stated, 
UL5 OSA, CSA number 14, applied to the control panel. These are the standards that are applied by power panels during the panel building program. NFPA 79 and SPE 1000 are standards that are applied to the rest of the machine. These standards apply mainly to the electrical aspects of the machine. Control panels built under a panel builder's program will have a UL mark and will be a tick in the box to this part of the inspection. These standards do not cater for mechanical aspects very well and there is no guidance on design like we have in the machinery directive where there are strict regulations and designed guidelines for all mechanical aspects of any machine. I hope the presentation has been informative. Bye for now.